75,000 years ago, the most powerful supervolcano modern man has ever experienced erupted in Indonesia. It may have even driven the human race to the brink of extinction. Lake Toba, on the island of Sumatra, formed in the crater left behind after 200 cubic miles of ash blasted into the atmosphere. Today, this is a peaceful place, occupied by fishing communities and visited by tourists curious about this vast lake and the hot springs that are a rare reminder of its volcanic past. But this calm could be shattered at any moment in this region of high seismic activity. 15, 20 feet tall. Easy. December 2004. An earthquake in the Indian Ocean launches the deadliest tsunami in history, raising fears of new volcanic activity in Indonesia. The vast readjustment in the Earth's crust which triggered this tragic series of events happened on the Sumatran Fault, part of the same geological system that caused the super eruption on the island 75,000 years earlier. Many scientists believe there's a direct link between earthquake activity and volcanic activity, but for Toba to erupt, it would need to have a large volume of magma already built up under the surface. Professor Rob McCaffrey of Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute in New York State made a study of volcanic activity beneath Lake Toba in 2001. A simple experiment in the college grounds shows how he used sound waves to understand the subterranean geology in Sumatra. Students position a series of sensors at equal distances from a source of sound waves, in this case a hammer. There you go. The sound waves from the hammer blow move through different materials at different speeds. So even though the sensors are the same distance away, it reaches some of them more quickly. That is a good one. Waves that travel through the walkways arrived sooner than the waves that travel through the soil underneath the grass. That's because the walkways are much more consolidated. So by analyzing sound waves at different points, scientists can create a picture of the geological features they have passed through. McCaffrey sets up sensors around Lake Toba to measure the sound waves generated by low-level earthquakes. His readings reveal an immense volcanic system hidden deep beneath the lake. Our tomography results suggest that there are uh, two separate chambers, a large one in the south and a smaller one in the north. And there's alarm. There are signs of new activity at Toba. If we're interpreting these things correctly, it looks like there is magma feeding directly into the chamber and rejuvenating the, the volcano today. There's still volcanic activity at the site of the largest eruption of the last two million years. To determine if a major new eruption's looming, experts look for signs of movement in the ground above the magma chamber. In 1993, McCaffrey took GPS positioning measurements all around Toba. In 2001, he returned to the site to look for surface changes. To our surprise, things just weren't moving at all. We could measure to within a sixteenth of an inch, and at that level, we didn't see any movement at all. Now, I would say that I, I don't expect anything catastrophic to happen at Toba, within my lifetime anyway. Toba may be safe for the near future, but what about the dozens of other ancient supervolcano sites, including the most famous at Yellowstone National Park? At Yellowstone, there's clear evidence of a volcanic past in the rugged landscape. And a series of geysers, fumaroles, and hot springs reveal continuing subterranean activity. 
Enough to have raised fears of a new super eruption brewing beneath the surface here. The problem is that we have no record of exactly what the warning signs are for these catastrophic events. This is one of the greatest concerns for Professor Bill McGuire, director of the Benfield Hazard Research Centre at University College London. The trouble with super eruptions is that we've never experienced one in modern times, so we don't know exactly what we will see before one of these eruptions. We may get months of warning, we may only get weeks, we may only get days. It's unknown where the next super eruption's likely to happen. They may occur where there hasn't been any eruption before. So magma may have been accumulating over the last few hundred years. And the first we'll know about it is when that magma breaks the surface and we get one of these huge eruptions. And super eruptions like Toba are on a completely different scale from the volcanoes we have experienced in modern times, such as Mount Surat in the Caribbean, Etna in Sicily, or Mount Pinatubo in the Philippines. If this ball represents the volume of material ejected by Pinatubo, which was one of the biggest eruptions of the, the 20th century, then this basketball represents the amount of material ejected by the Toba eruption. Now, Pinatubo actually cooled things down by, by maybe half a degree. It actually slowed down global warming. So you can imagine what an eruption of this size would do to the global climate. Our modern infrastructure is not designed to handle a Toba-level climate change like temperature drops of up to 30 degrees Fahrenheit or 90% rainfall reductions. A modern supervolcano could be a thousand times more devastating than the worst natural disasters on record. I think the next super eruption will kill perhaps a billion people through starvation. It will bring the global economy to the edge of complete collapse and it will be the greatest disaster that our civilization has ever had to cope with. The awesome dimensions of the Toba Caldera are a somber reminder of the power of nature. The super eruption here 75,000 years ago may have threatened the very future of the human race. The chances of a similar apocalyptic event in the 21st century are low. Maybe just one in 500. But the consequences could be just as devastating.